Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Players Championship 2016 edition. I'm Nick Miller alongside Joe Lissette, the Miracle Man, making his third straight Players Championship appearance. How are you feeling this weekend? I'm feeling, I feel good, man. I'm super happy to be here. I mean, that was kind of the goal is to get back. Like, I'm uneasy because this is a tough tournament to play in, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm excited. Yeah, you were one of the uh, yearly at large, you know, point earners. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of sweated it out there at home. Didn't come to the last <sighs> invitational, but you had a pretty good lead. So I, yeah, I, I did. I mean, it was a little, little dicey. Like I skipped the last two opens, and then I was going to go to the invitational, and then I was like, uh, maybe I can skate by without it. And uh, and yeah, so I had to, I had to worry a little bit, but it was. It felt in the end, safe. you made it back. You're yeah. here for a third time. You've had pretty decent success at the first two. Obviously, you want to I mean, go a little bit deeper, but you've day two both of them. Mm -hmm. and have been in good positions both times. Mostly in part, uh, legacy is always good to you. Yeah. This year, you're sticking with Miracles, so we want to talk to you about that. You played Miracles last year. The year before, you kind of pulled the rug out and did the crazy yeah. animator Gemstone Caverns deck, yeah. but you're back to your basic deck here. Miracles, let's take a look at what you're playing. All right. Yeah, and I'm really, I'm really depending on this because I want to make day two, and I am not confident in modern. So, I feel like I have to win the group, and I think that's doable. Sure, you've had a lot of success with Legacy this year. Top mm -hmm. eight at two of the Legacy Opens, plus the Grand Prix, mm -hmm. a lot of success. So, this is the deck you did it with, Legend Miracles, as you call it. You have the legendary creatures here, Vincer, Vendalian Click. These are why you play your version of the deck. Yeah, the, um, yeah, this is. I mean, I considered alternate versions for this weekend. Um, I spent a lot of time considering how would I build miracles if nobody else is playing miracles because that seemed like a possibility. Uh, I ended up ditching that plan and going with a slightly altered version of my normal deck that I just played all year. It's a lot of people question it. I, I see some criticism of it, but it works for me. I can't. Com I'm very happy with my results consistently. So so here we are with the creature package again and Snapcaster Mage along with the Legends. Yeah, and the main idea behind my build of Miracles is that one, it's good in the mirror. You have a significant advantage, and and another thing is just your kind of approach to dealing with permanence. Whereas other Miracle decks are using are planning on like Council's Judgment, ex Engineer Explosives to deal with permanence, uh, Planeswalkers in particular. I'm just planning on attacking them. Mm -hmm. And, and that's kind of what the whole deck is based on, is not having to use removal spells on Planeswalkers. Yeah, your philosophy of the deck has been consistent for the last couple of years. Yeah. You know what you're doing with it. You know, we have the Euro version, or the Ponder version, as they call it, and then yeah. we have Predict. Mm -hmm. Your version, pretty much you alone play it, though. A couple people pick it up from time to time and yeah. have decent results with it. This yeah. is the reason why. So we'll move into the next page. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, the core of the deck, Counterbalance, Sensei's Divining Top. This is why Miracles exist. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of... Your, your free win category. It was like a lot of decks have, I don't know, like Storm might have opening hands where you have like multiple Dark Rituals and Infernal Tuner, you just win. My version of the free win is turn one top, turn two counterbalance the deck against a deck that can't beat that. Mm -hmm. And there are less decks now than there were a couple of years ago that can't beat that, but there's still some. And then Jace is something where there are Miracle decks that don't play Jace or that play varying numbers. I still feel like it's pretty solid in... I mean, there aren't very many matchups where it's bad. Sure. And it's, uh, a lot of time, it's incredibly good. I mean, playing with Divine Top, often what you're looking, what I'm looking for is to develop a board state where no one has anything and I have a Divine Top. And then from a, sport, a state where no one has anything, then Jace just completely dominates the game. Right. And with your creature package, you actually can defend your Jace, yep. whereas a lot of decks have an issue doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I can defend it and attack theirs. And then, uh, and also in combination with Vendillion Click, where we don't have like a taxing probe or discard spells where you can look at the other person's hand, but we do have Vendillion Click, which makes Jace's uh, Fate Seal ability a hundred times better because it's difficult to uh, to Fate Seal someone when you they have three or four cards in their hand, you know what they are, but when you know what they have, or if they have nothing, then then Fate Sealing is just I'm very aggressive. I think that's one thing about my play of Miracles versus other people is I use the Brainstorm ability less than, than other people do. Right. Moving on to the next page here, we'll see the miracles of the Miracle deck. Mm -hmm. Four Terminus, only one Entreat, and then four uh, Swords of Plashers. I know in the past you've kind of been a three Swords guy, mm -hmm. but here in this event you have four along with four Terminus. Yeah. In fact, the, the only change to my main deck from what I would consider my normal build for the last six months is an Entreat switching into a Swords of Plashers. And that was done for the... Uh, like, I'm comfortable playing with three Swords, but here... 
especially among players that don't play as much Legacy, I feel like there could be a fair number of Delver and, in fact, decks or Eldrazi, creature decks in general. So it just felt safer to go with the Fourth Swords. And then again, the Entreat is a great card against some of those same decks, but it's also a card that you, you don't want to see before turn, let's say, five. And so we, sh we should have a more stable opening with, with one less of these. So we reduced a little bit of the late game power in order to try and just get to late game where I'm probably ahead anyway. Right. Move on to the next page here. We'll see you know the cards that get you to what you need and to the late game. Mm -hmm. Brainstorm, Ponder. These are cards we ex you know expect to see in Legacy. You, of course, only have two Ponder in your build. You know We, of course, mentioned the early version. Some have four Ponder. Mm -hmm. You have fluctuated a lot in the past. Yeah. You wound up on two here at two Spell Snare as well. Yeah, so the... Uh... The Ponders are, I mean, Ponder's a good card. It helps you set up your opening. It helps you develop your mana base, really, at the beginning of the game, which is it's one of the best things about Turn 1 Ponder is you, you can establish your land. Uh, the problem, and it is, it is an issue with the Legend Miracles build, is you're kind of, there's a floor on how many lands you can play. I, I tried for a long time to, to make it work in different ways, but as far as, and I have a problem, well, I have more experience with it than anyone else does, the lowest amount of lands you can play is 22. There's just no way around that if you want to play Entreat the Angels. You can't play 21 lands. And so the 20 land decks with four, or 21 land decks with four ponders to help hit the extra lands, well, I just don't have room for mm -hmm. that because I have to play more lands, so I don't need as many ponders to hit them because I'm just going to draw them. Right. Another reason, actually, originally, before I was as knowledgeable about the deck, the, way, the reason why I was not as into playing ponder and playing more lands was because... I knew that I'm somebody who I want to be able to keep one land hands pretty often. And so I needed to have, like if I have a one land brainstorm, I need to make sure that that brainstorm is going to hit more lands. Mm -hmm. So if there's like, let's say 20 land in the deck, that's less likely than with 22 or 23. And then the two spell snares, that was something that the only major structural change I had this year, was, it was about six months ago now, where I trimmed out a force oil and... I wanted more early game help against things like him to Turok, which is pretty destructive. Uh, it's great in the mirror. Uh, Dark Confidant, and then there's a lot of cyborg cards that cost two, mm -hmm. and then more recently Chalice of the Void has become much more common. So uh, Spell Snare is a card I'm very happy with, and yeah. it's generally anytime it's in my opening hand, that's that's good. Yeah, it's become very good in the late meta in the mm -hmm. Legacy meta game. Yeah, moving on, Force Will. You said you trim one copy, of course. Three yeah. of this card, you need to have kind of the safety valve. Yeah. Then we move into the lands, and of course, important to talk about your build, the Cavern, normally naming Wizard, and mm -hmm. then Caracas here. To work with your uh, legends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cavern and Wizard gets every creature in the deck. Um, there have been times when I played with Monastery Mentor, and um, in that case, you well, well, if you, I had multiple caverns at the time, but generally you still name Wizard, but you could name Human, mm -hmm. um, which still gets two of the blue guys. But yeah, we're just on Wizard every single time here, and then Caracas is this is kind of the other well, obviously with Legend Miracles, this is kind of what we're pushing with the deck and why we need the extra land slots to accommodate these. Uh, the Caracas works great with my own creatures. It also is a nice safety valve. Rand is not as popular as it used to be, but we still have uh, Death of Taxes is more common, mm -hmm. and they even have more kinds of Dahlias now, yeah. so there's even more <laughs> targets for it. Um, and even um, most recently, the Leovold has started popping up, and even though bouncing that with Caracas stinks because they get to draw not a card, great. it's still it's costing them three mana and me one. And there's been a couple times where that happened turn after turn, and I still came out ahead because with Cavern... They can't counter my creatures anyway, even if they have more cards. And just developing the board, and yeah, just Caracas. I love Caracas. It's, yep. it's fantastic. All right, moving on to the rest of the lands here. We're going to have a bunch of fetch lands that are going to be finding your basic planes, mm -hmm. islands, a volcanic, and some tundras here yeah. as your mana base. <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, I run, oddly enough, even though I run more lands than every other Miracles deck, I run fewer dual lands than most of them. <clears throat> because I'm making room for the other stuff, and because I just don't... I think most people are pl being too conservative on, on their mana sources. Like, you don't need... Why do I need three Tundras? Sure. Like, generally, I don't want any in play. So I want to get the basics whenever possible. And I came very, very close to playing a fifth island this weekend, because it is just safer, and there are wastelands that are going to be running around. But I ended up sticking with four. Um, the uh, mirror... I mean, the mirror ignoring... That's a terrible way to put it, but the, <laughs> the version I was working on that assumed there were no miracles in the metagame 
uh, actually had more basics because we didn't have red in the deck, but we're back to the normal structure here. Okay. Nine fetch lands is, is enough. I mean, ten would be nice, but that's how many I, I always play nine, and that's that's good enough. All right, moving on to the sideboard here. Three Fluster Storms. You're the one of the few people I see run more than one or two of this card, and I'm a huge fan of Fluster Storm. <coughs> you so beating a lot of decks with huge stacks. Fluster yeah. Storm is the key to doing. Yeah, Fluster Storm is is so powerful. It's just like the decks uh, against blue combo decks, for example, like Show and Tell, where if they have forcible backup, it doesn't matter. They can't break through it. And um, the other main point where I like it is against Stifle, because Stifle can really set you back and really disrupt you, and you can just um, often the most, even though it's rare, the place where you can most often get two cards on Flusterstorm, which is I mean a possibility you have, you don't have the other counters, is against decks like that where you respond to say a Cantrip with a Fetch Land. And they go to stifle the fetch land, and you flush storm and get both, and that's huge. Uh, so flush storm's good against all the combo decks and against the uh, a lot of the Delver decks. Uh, Surgical is <coughs> the grave hate I've switched to from Rest in Peace because uh, the black red reanimator decks are just very fast, and I don't want to have to wait until two mana, especially if there's a Chancellor trigger. Mm -hmm. I just want the cheapest thing I can get, and and that's it. And then back to basics is primarily there for Eldrazi. Eldrazi, yeah. I'll bring it in against lands. I'll bring it in against a few other things, show and tell decks. I'll bring it in nowadays. But really, it's there for Eldrazi. And a common question that comes up is, well, what about Blood Moon? Blood Moon's you know, basically the same thing, and it's also a game-winning card. And that's true. And uh, if you allow me here, I'll talk about it for a minute. The, uh, the difference and the reason why I like back to basics is because it's a less powerful card against me also. Sure. You're not and shutting off your Caracas and your exactly. And and like the that. the biggest the biggest the way I like to illustrate it is if if your hand like you're on turn three if you have two islands and let's say a volcanic island and you play Blood Moon now you're stuck on white basically forever, but if you have the same mana and you have it back to basics you're stuck on white until you draw a flooded strand and then you have all the white you want. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I like the weaker card here because it's less punishing yeah, to my it's to me. For you. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on to the rest of the cards here. Two moat, two engineer explosives, a power blast. Mode is another card that has picked up a lot of popularity thanks to the rise of the Eldrazi decks. Yeah, and Mode is just, um, that is really my Eldrazi package, is back to basics and Mode. Uh, going back, whenever Eldrazi kind of debuted in Legacy uh, around a year ago, give or take, um, I wasn't playing either one of those cards. I wasn't playing any Land Hate, and I wasn't playing uh, Moats, and now I've got two of each. This is my Eldrazi package. I'm very happy with it. Um, it's slow. It's four mana, but if you can land it, they're generally done. Right. I mean, they have a few things. World Breaker was like one of the few things. Yeah, I mean, like, some like of them that. have one Ulamog in the sideboard, but in general, they're stuck. And it's also great against any number of other decks. So <clears throat> uh, I'm very happy with, with the moats. I debated, actually, the other version of my deck for this weekend only had one and had a humility to go with it. But uh, this, this version with the Legend creatures, I don't want to want to shut those down. Yeah. So we're still going with two moats. Explosives um, hits Chalice of the Void, hits small creatures in, in fast decks. Um, it it's just generally yeah. good. A very flexible card. Yeah. yeah. And then the blast is the so I talked about how the entreat switched into the Swords of Plowshares. Uh the entreat actually moved into the board, and the card we actually cut out of the 75 was a blast effect. So generally I have three, and that's a pretty common number among miracle decks of all types. And I'm only playing two this weekend. <clears throat> mostly because or I'm Anticipating there not being too many other Miracle decks. Sure. Um, I wimped out on the no mirror build, but even then, we're still hedging a little bit by cutting one overall. And so the uh, the last card in the sideboard yeah. is the other main deck, uh, Entreat the Angels, which is just now in the board for longer matchups where I'm going to want it. And then we have another we have a Wear and Tear, which is similar to Explosives in that it can kill Chalice of the Void, but also kills um, Alluren, Food Chain, all your so random library. things you have to catch. Yeah. Basically, Plus it's really good with countertop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good with countertop. It's nice to float, yeah, because it hits one and two. And really, it hits their sideboard cards. Whatever, most of the good sideboard cards against Miracles are enchantments, artifacts, Pithing Needle, Null Rod, that kind of thing. Wear and Tear hits that stuff, so that's that's why it's there. All right. Well, you didn't go with the you know, no mirror build, but you yeah. went with your bread and butter build. It looks very good. Obviously, you could talk about it for... As long as we'd let you. I so. could, yeah. <laughs> I have uh, I have a lot of knowledge stored about this. I, I love talking about it. It's, I mean, Legacy in general, or even Magic, to me, more general, it's just a game where I feel like there's no limit to how deep you can go into it. And and this is, I dove really far on, on this. All right, and, Joe. Uh, well, Legacy is the Force format. You said it's the most important to you. 
You're prepared. Your deck looks good. What do you think the meta is going to look like? I mean, we, uh, Caleb and I kind of like made, a we each, we signed ourselves half the field and combined it together and looked at it. And it's honestly, I feel like it's harder to predict than it was the last couple of years. And we did a pretty jab, bad job of it the last couple of years anyway. So, um, that's, that's honestly, I mean, I'm basically playing my deck that I play against any normal field. Um, the last two years, like last year I had submerge main deck. I didn't actually remember that. Um, and I, when I looked at my deck list a couple weeks ago from last year, I was shocked. I was like, what? How did I come to this? But yeah, no, it made sense at the time. I was like, oh, in fact, it was really scary and no one played it. Um, <laughs> so I didn't really try very hard. Aside from having one less card from the mirror than normal, I didn't really do anything for this field because I didn't feel like I could accurately, we could accurately guess what it would be. All right. Well, we'll find out. Joe, thanks for joining me here on the sideboard. Thanks for filling us in on Miracles. For Joe, I'm Nick Miller here on the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Roanoke.